Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Before we get started today, I'd like to recognize our European and Scandinavian reenactor friends who have been having a pretty tough time with this coronavirus as of late. Don't worry guys, you'll be back in the field shooting it out with each other soon enough. Thanks for keeping the history alive. What else? Oh, we have an episode to do, yeah. What's it on? Oh, serial killers, Old West, yeah, let's do it. For Halloween, we've been watching a lot of slasher films, and it got me thinking of the Bender family I did a video on a while back. Then that got me thinking about other serial killers in the West. A quick search showed me an alarming number of them, but some of the violent criminals can't really be classified as serial murderers. So, let's take a stab at a couple of wicked, evil, deplorable killers I found out about. Nebraska in 1876 was embracing its ninth year as a state when a man named Stephen D. Richard started to take people's lives. They all deserve to die. <clears throat> it began when he met a man traveling on horseback, and after a friendly game of cards, he shot the traveler for demanding his money back. A few days later, he met the man's business partner who had seen the two together, and Stephen killed him because he was asking too many questions. After killing a horse and buggy salesman who accused him of theft in Iowa, he returned to Nebraska murdering yet another traveler. I should mention that in all these instances, Richards buried the bodies. Fast forward two years and Stephen's staying with a family of four named Harlson and gets married to one of them. They too get wind of his murderous ways and he ends up killing the entire family. Oh, then he buried them. Did I mention he was into burying victims? Yeah, a burying kind of guy. You know, you could help me out here. In 1879, Stephen D. Richards was finally brought to justice and hanged in Minden, Nebraska in front of 2,000 onlookers. He had confessed to enjoyably killing nine people. If you are interested in more info, and there are a lot of details I left out to protect the innocent, Thank you. You can read his confession available at archive.org, link in the description field below. The closing of the Civil War found Charles Kennedy, a frontiersman, living in Elizabethtown, New Mexico with his Ute wife and child. What is a Ute? Ute is an American Indian tribe from that area and parts north. They set up a rest stop for travelers. Charles would register the guests into the rest stop, maybe feed them some vittles, then kill them and either burn or bury their bodies. In 1870, during a meal, a passerby asked if many Indians were in the area and Charles's son replied, can't you smell the one Papa put under the floor? Well, good old serial killer Kennedy, as I like to call him, went into a rage and killed both the traveler and his own son and buried them under the floorboards. He locked his hysterical wife in the house and left. She eventually escaped through the chimney and ran 15 miles to town to get help. Gunfighter Clay Allison and a posse found Charles Kennedy and threw him in jail. However, when rumors that Kennedy's lawyer was going to buy his freedom, it so disgusted the citizens that Clay Allison wrapped a rope around Charles's neck and had horses drag him to his death. You may think that last part is a bit of a stretch, <clears throat> but it's all true. An interesting note is that less than 20 years later, Jack the Ripper would be making headlines in England and across the globe, giving rise to criminal profiling, which helps authorities put a stop to some of these fiends. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail. <laughs>